Good evening, welcome to the Opinion Box. My name is Levi Kones. Tonight we are speaking to the women rep for Nandi County. Her name is Honorable Cynthia Muge. We're here to talk about everything really. Our journey, what's happening in politics, and what do women reps really do? Karibu uh, Mwishmiwa. Thank you so much, Levi. It's a pleasure to be on this show today. Uh, my name is Cynthia, Cynthia Muge, Mrs. Rotich. I, come, I am the woman rep uh, Nandi County. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, in CAST TV for this particular show. I want to say that um, I think I have followed a few uh, number of times uh, about the things that are discussed here and I'm, part to, I'm happy to be part of the discussion today. Yeah, we're glad to have you. Pleasure is mine. Is there anything surprising in Parliament since you got there? Surprising, yeah, practically everything is surprising. I think every new place has everything surprising. Mm -hmm. uh, but with time, you, you sort of get used to it. Uh, there's a lot of surprising things. Uh, of course, um, I thought I would have an upper hand having, had, uh, having uh, been uh, in the county assembly, which was practically a parliament. Yes. Uh, but the other one was a really mini parliament, and even how some things are done on, on this other house in this parliament is um, it's quite different. Yeah, standing I, orders are different. Not per se, uh, but I think the standing orders here are more detailed. The standing orders of the county assemblies were just domesticated, but we did not really do the real domestication for it to be applicable to the real situation or uh, the setup that we have in our counties. So there's a bit of a difference in terms of um, the detail. And number two, issues to do with procedure. There's a lot of strictness on this upper side. Um, it's really strict in terms of procedure. And then I noted also how to adjourn meetings and, ses and sittings, especially mm -hmm. committee sessions. They're a bit different. Now for a county assembly, you would uh, have a proposal saying, I so-and-so propose for the adjournment of this meeting and then there will be a seconder. Mm -hmm. Here, uh, the chair has power, the absolute power. Uh, it just rise up and adjourn the meeting, whether you agree or yeah. not. So, Really Do you yeah. think there's some things that you should mirror back to the county assembly that should be picked up from there? Yeah, a lot of things. Yeah, a lot of things. Um, of course, considering that uh, the devolution was, uh, took a lot of functions down to the county governments, I actually feel that the standing order at the county uh, assemblies should be more detailed than uh, the standing order at the national uh, level. And of course, there's some very pertinent issues that have actually uh, led to some, uh, some very pertinent issues that are in the county not uh, let to sleep like because the, uh, the the standing orders are not very express about them and uh, other other things other policies of course they are not very tight in regards to where does their power reach and where can they not get to so i feel like uh, there's some the strictness in the national assembly should be also cascaded down to the county assemblies it would do more service to the county assemblies and especially also for growing the leadership down there yeah Yes. Do you feel hard as as a women representative? Seen? Ah well, uh, when you go to Parliament uh, Levy, I have to tell you this. Of course, I'm not um, in the business of pulling those cards. Huh? Uh, there's uh, supremacy in the Parliament. There's yeah. a, so an animal called um, ranking member. So, a ranking member, we have members who are doing the sixth terms fifth, the fourth, third, yeah. and second, and there's the first timers. Of course, I'm glad uh, the newcomers this time around, they're really vibrant, but I can also attribute the vibrancy in the newcomers, uh, uh, first time uh, members of parliament, to the fact that, um, uh, you know, Levi, uh, this time around, more than 50% of uh, the previous parliament came back. Mm -hmm. It's quite surprising, and it's, it's, it's quite interesting. So the number of it's new members, rare. or ranking members, are more than the new members. Uh, to be precise, so it's 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 quite interesting. So there's uh, the supremacy battle of um, uh, I'm a ranking member, and you see, being a ranking member, you are entitled to so many things. Uh, first is uh, the priority or order of speaking. If a ranking member rises before you uh, is in the house, they will be given priority to speak before you're given uh, the same priority. When there's something that is supposed to be done by the house, uh, the ranking member is always has the priority. Mm -hmm. Even in a location of offices, member first, you, they sort the ranking members, and then of course uh, they will come to the newcomers. Of course, Levy, I take it with a lot of grace, yes. uh, because it also tells you that you need to actually work harder, ensure that you have, ho you have a hold on um, the agendas of you, you promised your people for you to come back as a ranking member for you to also be able to enjoy uh, those kind of uh, benefits. So uh, at times you feel, for you to be heard and seen in the National Assembly, it's not easy levy. Like for myself, I have had to master the art of, if you don't get the opportunity of uh, being 
uh, given the, 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 the mic by the speaker, mm -hmm. I have mastered the art of knowing who and who is moving the motion so that uh, when they're given the right of reply, I sneak to their sitting place and I ask if they can donate me two minutes. Mm -hmm. So that two minutes, I make my voice heard adequately and sufficiently on the floor of the house. And of course, uh, uh, in regards to being seen, uh, being a first time member, because I really want to be able to learn uh, the ropes of uh, being heard and being very visible, you find that I always, I am always in parliament. Like today, I was in parliament until parliament was adjourned at mm -hmm. seven. That is when I came here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, I don't feel very hard or very seen, but I'm really trying to ensure that I get there yeah. somehow. How are, you, how are you doing the balance between there and, and home? Um, you have to. You see, you see Levi, uh, I remember when I was campaigning, I actually told the people that I represent, the great people of Nandi, who actually graciously gave me this opportunity, that I would be their best bet. So Levi, uh, when I came to parliament, I knew that I have a family, I have children, I'm going to continue having others. So there's no compromise between how I'm able to do that, uh, both at the National Assembly, in the chamber, at home, where my people are, and also in my family. So it's, it's not easy but it calls for sacrifice. There's no easy job, Levy. Even if you ask yourself, you find your job very hard, but you see, it's your job. And just like me, I am sure that you love your job, so you just mm -hmm. find a way of balancing, them. balancing. So I really do, when I have uh, a few hours, a few days, I really spend them with my family, with my kids, with my spouse. And when I have also the other time, I also ensure that I'm always at home, on the ground. I ensure that I'm in constituency tindred to the father's constituency in Mosop, like every other time I have a minute. And when I have sittings like right now in committee sittings, I ensure that I actually attend them so that I make maximum mm -hmm. use of my time and I'm able to balance my life. You know, life has to go on and your job has to be done to perfection. Yeah. Previous holders of this position had pushed for, you know, a, you know, a larger financial allocation to it. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, I, I, I strongly feel the same way. Um, and uh, actually their grounds were solid, they were entirely solid. Of course, you know, Levy, before you get to office, you don't appreciate the challenges in that office. Of course, I used to think, uh, of course, uh, I used to think uh, maybe that money in the office of uh, women rep in terms of uh, the GAF, it's, uh, that fund is called GAF, mm -hmm. National yeah. Government Affirmative Action Fund. Yeah. So having held or controlled zero shillings, you know, as a member of the county assembly, you only control the talking and the paperwork at the county assembly. Mm -hmm. Nothing. But not the actual money. N n never. It never gets to you having to control it or having a say in regards to how it's spent or something like that. So I used to feel like that 42 million that is given uh, per county, that 7 million per constituency, uh, my constituency is six, uh, are six, my constituencies are six. Mm -hmm. So that will make 42 million. So I used to feel like, wow, this is a lot of money. Even with this money, I'm, I can be able to do one, two, three, four, five, six things. But let me, you know, I was operating from um, a point of uh, uh, not knowing. So of course, when you get to <coughs> Bunge, and you're able to now look at the larger place that you represent, that is the Nandi County for my case, you find that there are so, so many needs. And the responsibilities that have been put under this office, <coughs> they are not easy responsibilities. They are very, they are, they are, they are very tasking. One, you have to deal with issues to do with the youth. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with issues to do with women. You have to deal with issues to do with persons living with disabilities. And you have to do with issues uh, dealing with people who are vulnerable in the society, the, the mm -hmm. old the sick and you know all those kind of things so uh considering the amount of money that is given it's actually like a drop in the ocean for instance recently when uh, the money was released levy uh, just for your information mm -hmm. and um, the viewers yeah um money uh, government releases money in small uh, because of the scarcity and all that so it was re a, a small amount of money for the first quarter was released which was around 1.9 1 million nine hundred and four thousand that was supposed to be uh, to cater for bursary can you imagine one million oh, nine hundred and four thousand no, it was 1,904,000 wow. and you're supposed to ensure that it gets to every other person who is needy mm. in the county. You see, it's practically impossible. You're supposed to spread uh, it out. So to speak, yes, you should and you must. Now, uh, the problem, uh, how we did it, uh, however, because we actually settled on another mode of uh, uh, distribution of money is something that we can talk about later. Mm -hmm. But I want to say that I strongly feel for the previous holders of the office um, that this particular office should be given a lot of uh, more money and just so that I don't uh, we are not just speaking we are actually working the talk 
we actually went and saw the president and the president was gracious enough and was able to add us one billion that's for the next financial year which is starting in uh, july mm -hmm. now prior to that there was an amendment that we we're trying to bring to the uh, to bunge uh, to the constitution to anchor the ngaf and cdf yeah. and the other empowerment funds the law, yes of course, we had a serious fight huh, in regards to the percentages because, you see, uh, this, again, it goes back to the supremacy. Single constituency MPs are supreme in, in Bunge. So some of us, we are called affirmative, uh, the woman reps. Mm -hmm. So we really need, we spend and use a lot of energy to be able to stamp authority and say, hey, this is our place and we are also equally MPs like you are and we should be accorded uh, the, uh, the, the, the respect we deserve and the attention that we deserve. So we, we disagreed a lot in regards to the percentage because we were trying to input percentages of uh, how much money should be given to CDF, how much money should be given to NGAF. Mm -hmm. So CDF naturally has, uh, has had 2.5, so they were increasing or proposing to increase it to 5%. Mm -hmm. And the woman reps, uh, the NGAF one, actually did not have a percentage. It was just a blanket amount of 2B per financial year. So you see, it, there's a very huge difference, it's day and night, literally. Yeah. So we were actually not being over ambitious. We were saying, if they're actually settling, settling for 5%, we are just asking for 2.5% of the same amount, because you see, they have the numbers, so if you cannot really like uh, say, let's flex our muscles. The flexing of muscles in Bunge happens with numbers. Yeah. We are disadvantaged on that front that we don't have numbers. And when it gets there, even the female MPs that we have, naturally, even if it were you, Levy, you would still side with the other side because that is where you uh, represent the single constituency MPs. So there's a big problem and uh, the money needs to be increased. But you see, there's also competition. So someone feels like, eh, if you give this woman rep, uh, they might come and such, snatch my single constituency yeah. MP uh, position. But why is it so difficult? Because even the even the balance of gender equation has been a tough one to crack. Parliament it's after parliament. Tough. Yeah, it's it's tough, and I can tell you that it's still tough. Even the president has made proposals, but um, you see people. Um, what do you think is the real underlying issue? The real underlying issue is um, number one, uh, the men are not taking ownership of the same thing. They feel like. If you are given this opportunity, you will sort of uh, outdo me for some weird reason. There's just just some um, there's there's a lack of ownership mm. of the same across some the gender of some sort. A lot of competition for that matter. And you so, mm. see, the problem is we made the gender issue a female issue, a women issue. That is actually where we missed the point. So everything gender is uh, construed to mean women issues. And you see, we have a patriarchal society. Our society is very patriarchal. As much as we are trying of late uh, with the chiefs and the teachers and all that, yeah. it's still patriarchal to the core. So every time that issue comes up, they see it as a, a women issue. And then the problem with men, I don't know what happens to, with some most of the men. They don't look at the women in their circle, in their workplace, as they look at the women in their houses, the daughters, the sisters, the mothers, and the wives. Mm. When they it see gets you here, as activists. Yes, when it gets here, it becomes <laughs> different. It doesn't yeah. become the women that they know. Mm. And they, when they're in their houses, they treat the others differently. Mm. And I, was, I, I always tell them, um, you see, like as you, as you can see right now, I'm not saying we're doing well, but we are not doing badly off. Right now, if you go to most of these schools, most of the teachers who have been, been employed, you can count up to eight and then you count one, two, three, four, five are women. Mm, and true. then one, two, three are men. Uh, you go again to other, several setups. Even in corporates. Yeah, it's several changing. setups right now, yeah. Yeah, yeah more women are ascending. Uh, yes. they, are, they, they are going to those particular places. Mm. It will reach a time levy where it will be, the gender issue will be really gender. There will be other places we will be affirmating, we're doing affirmative action for men. And then there will be other places we will be doing affirmative action for women. So mm. the only place that we're not doing affirmative action for men right now is politics, practically. But corporate world, most of these places, we are actually almost doing affirmative action for men. Yeah. It's just that Do you um, feel like your current parliament, this 13th one, will solve this story? Uh, I don't think I have enough confidence to comment on that conclusively, Levy, because when you see the mm. amount of dragging that's happening in that bunga right now, um, even even the issue when the issue rises up because the other day um, the deputy the honourable deputy speaker of the national assembly uh, of course every time when we ask for positions as women of course and uh, trying trying to uh, claim whatever is rightfully ours mm -hmm. they always pull the card of have you ever s you don't know that the uh, the deputy speaker of the national assembly the second in command is a woman Kwaivo, 
mtulie mnafaa kutosheka you know those kind of statements <laughs> so i don't feel very confident yeah. but i'm telling uh, the women of kenya and the women of nandi and uh, rift valley all together mm. that we're going to push this at least we have um, goodwill political goodwill from the president the president looks uh, like he's really um, keen on ensuring that we sort out the two thirds gender rule uh, because um, it's a bit of a problem there's an a hanging court order ish yes. that just waits uh, awaits someone to slap it down and then yes. boom uh, the parliament should be yes we, yeah. we go home and we start afresh so i i want to say that uh, a lot of dialogue should be involved in this particular matter so i can be able to have it uh, sorted out conclusively otherwise it's something that has been um, it's still hanging over our heads for a very long time with no one willing to actually sit down and look at it objectively and we want to invite the um, our male counterparts let's look at this issue objectively like if we get to a point where we have 50 50 percent there's no problem uh but we might i'm just saying we might just picture a situation where we get to the other gender that is male gender has a needs affirmative action you see it should be fair you know tables turn in this place so yeah. I want to ask and invite objectivity in sorting out this problem. And let's look beyond our personal interest. Let's look beyond what is happening today and look at posterity. We're doing this for the future. It's not about us. And for you to be remembered for anything good, you have to be positively remembered in posterity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's, uh, it's true you guys really are trying, even with the numbers that you have. Yeah. To, pu to push issues out there. Yeah, we are making enough noise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that came to the, to the forefront the other day was the issue of sanitary pads. Yes. What is your feeling about it? Um, the issue of sanitary pads, huh? I, I think uh, it's so embarrassing that we're still talking about uh, other, other children lacking sanitary pads. Uh, I was telling a friend of mine today uh, that we met at Bunge, and she actually asked me how I felt about the show that was put up for uh, in arguing the case out about sanitary pads. First, I want to say that um, previously in the last regime um, where the other team served, the, the responsibility of the sanitary towels or sanitary pads was moved and put under education. So mm -hmm. it was actually entirely moved from uh, the woman rep uh, and affirmative action position to the education. I don't know the wisdom behind that, but it was uh, it was just moved. So when we came, we were looking at the things that uh, we were able to uh, handle as a gaff. And we noted in a very, it was glaring that it was moved to education. Of course, we've uh, mm. since, and especially during the supplementary budget, we have been able to present our case to the Department of Education mm. and the budget, uh, the Committee on Education and the Budget Committee to be able to uh, bring it back and ungaff yeah. so that we have the women reps who are actually the advocates for these particular issues be able to also have it channeled th yeah. through their office. Maybe they thought it was a school girl issue? I don't know. No. I don't know. It's, yeah. it, it, you see, um, the, the issue of sanitary towels is not only affecting school-going mm -hmm. children. True. It's, a, it's affecting everyone. Every, every woman who is um, in the childbearing age, uh, that is somewhere between 49 and below, uh, they actually have sanitary uh, towels issue. And this sanitary towels issue is not, it's not a creation levy. It's real. Mm. Like, it's real. You still find that there are other people, other women, and other girls who still use blankets like previously. Mm. Of course, previously, like how many years ago, 10, 15 years ago, it was more rampant. Right now, it's not as bad, but there are dire situations and dire cases that still uses those um, uh, kind of um, items for them to, um, to deal with the menstruation and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually feel like this sanitary uh, towels issue should not be politicized levy. It should actually be a primary need and it should be one of the needs that have been entirely met in this country. Mm. It, we are not at a, we are at an age and time where the issue of um, a girl, a woman not able to um, sort out their sanitary towel uh, needs, you, you know, it's it's just mm. it's which is a discussion that we should have sorted out completely and, and uh, removed and off I the think, table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, it should we should be there. But the problem is, uh, and by the way, this government is not as broke as it looks. There's money actually for those kind of issues. Yeah. The problem is implementation and the monitoring and evaluation, ensuring that it is translated from the money that is provided to the real item that the person needs on the ground. So we are hoping that uh, with the reverse of the same thing, uh, of the same fund or the same money, or the same responsibility to the office of the women reps, we will be able to ensure that this act, this actually materializes in every other school going girl getting these sanitary towels. But now, Levy, that sorts out the school going cohort, 
what happens to the other women yeah. who are not able to access it now that is where empowerment comes in because mm. the, the, re the reason why a, a woman would use a sweater or use a blanket is because they don't have that 50 shillings to get a single mm. uh, packet of the sanitary mm. towels yeah. so we are actually embarking again on empowering these women so they can be able to be uh, self-reliant and they're able to ac afford those kind of things so that um yeah we remove this shame it's um it's not something to be ashamed of it shouldn't be ashamed yeah. of but it's something that should surprisingly be it sounded like it was still an uncomfortable discussion which is where we get it in wrong parliament you know yeah that is where we get it wrong i was actually telling them it's not shameful every woman who actually menstruates should be happy that it's happening that mm. you're healthy yes that you that you're fertile, that that you're you're fertile able, and yes. you do all those kind of things it should not yeah. be uncomfortable where we make it uncomfortable is because I actually think anyone, any person who felt uncomfortable or felt like it was not okay for, the, for it to be done in such a manner is part of the problem in, because they ensure that they inhibit the implementation of these um, uh, policies and regulations and ensuring that these people actually get uh, those particular items. So it should not be shameful. We should actually be proud of it, but we need to be able to handle it and make it disappear, like it should not be rubbed on our faces every other time. Mm. It's natural. It's beautiful. It's, it's nice. It should remain as such. We just ensure that we're able to handle it. Okay. We'll take a break on that note. We'll be right back after these messages.